Welcome to Crosswinds, where the relevance of God intersects with the reality of this world. Here at Crosswinds, we're on a journey to discover who God created us to be. Well, we've got a great message for you today, something that I feel from my heart that the Lord is speaking to us for at such a time as this. But before we go any farther, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that every person that is watching this would feel the positive, anointing power of the Holy Spirit. Move into the homes, come through our phones, let us watch that YouTube and let it just speak to us. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Listen, if I haven't met you yet, and I believe I've met most people, but every week there's somebody new. So if you're that one or 10 or 20 or 100 of you, if I haven't met you yet, I'm Pastor Pete, and today we're talking about what I'm calling the stumbling conundrum. The stumbling conundrum. It seems like everybody, and, and, I, and everybody is a tough word to say, but how about this? Almost everybody seems to be in a stumble today. In our world, people are just messed up, and they, they, they can't seem to get it together they're messed up on the politics and they're messed up on inflation and they're messed up on their families and they're messed and they're, we just seem to stumble. And I'm hearing more and more stories and people are calling me because of the nature of my office. You know, that marriage is tough for them and, they're, and, and he messed up and she messed up and what do I do? And sometimes I just wanna pull my hair out and I wanna say, come on people, just do what's right. But you know what, that's easier said than done. And so this stumbling is going to continue until we get our head together about what that means to live a life without tripping up. You see, nothing is new under the sun. We have all heard this saying, and it seems like we're just like the Galatian Christians. We have great starts, but rarely do we have flourishing finishes. And speaking of Galatian Christians, I want to focus on that book today because that's what the book of Galatians in the New Testament, written by a guy named Paul, he was writing it to a church, and it was the Galatian church. And, and in this church, people were continuing to stumble. And it seems like if you were to read Galatians and not know it was written 2,000 years ago, it would be like our world that we live in today. Guys were getting messed up. They were, well, I got to do this in order for God to love me, or I, I have to do that to make my life better. Or, and, and then they're just constantly going back and forth. And Paul was saying, wait, wait, quit this stuff. And so I would like to take just a few short minutes here and really just focus on Galatians and let you know that this is going to be the theme of our next 18 minutes. Galatians 5.1. Now you're going to see it come on your screen. I'm going to quote it from memory. And, and, and I'm quoted for learning from the NIV and the King James Version, sometimes a mix of there, but if you have other versions or what's going on the screen, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And so first of all, Paul said, and, and we're not gonna go from the beginning to Galatians, we're gonna go from chapter five into chapter three, into chapter four, into chapter six. That's how we're gonna do. So all right, let's get our listening ears on. And Paul said this to the Galatian church, and he's saying this to you and I. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage see for the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long-suffering gentleness kindness faithfulness meekness self-control against these things there is no law now concerning the law christ he redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us for as written cursed is anyone who is hung upon a tree he redeemed us so the blessing given to Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. And through him, we might have the promise of the Spirit. Now, in the chapter 4, he's telling us, but when the right time had come, God sent his son, Jesus, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law so that we might have the full rights as sons and be heirs and join heirs with Jesus. And then he tells us this, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. 
whatever a man sows, he will also reap. And then finally, don't be weary in doing good. For in due season, you're going to reap a harvest if you don't give up. You see, they say that Galatians was written to the church who was invaded by Gnostics. And Gnostics are people who who say you got to do this and do that to be a good person. You got to do this and do that to be saved. You got to do this and that for God to love you. And, and, they, and they started putting rules and regulations and stuff that people couldn't even do and that's, couldn't even do. And today it's kind of like that. Every, it seems like every state wants a new rule and we got a new regulation and this one is taking a rule away and this one's adding a rule and now we're giving this away and in order to give this away, we got to add this to you. And we are in a jumbled mess. But listen, those of us who stand on the Lord, we can walk in the great path of the Lord without stumbling. And so how do we get out of it? Well, Jesus, in Mark chapter 4, tells us that there is this one commandment, this one, it wasn't a commandment, excuse me, it was a parable, it was a story, and he said, if you understand this story, you can understand everything I'm telling you. And so here, we're going to read it from Mark 4, 3 through 8, and it says, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed, And as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. And some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. And other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. And it came up and grew and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60 and some 100 times. And then he explained it. And so I'll just give you my explanation. He said, the seed that is being sown is the truth of the word of God. And it falls on everybody. But some people don't get it. Some people get it for a while. And other people get it for a little longer. But then only a certain amount of people get the full process of it. And they produce great crops 30, 60, 100 times. It means that they produce great things in their life 30 times more than they could ever think or 60 times more, even 100 times. So let's go over those four situations and see if that pertains to you. So why in the world does it seem like the word is falling on deaf ears? All right, let's get our thinking caps on. All right, come on, folks. Here it is. We are in a world right now where the Bible is spoke more than it ever has been in our history, in the world. It's on TV, it's on radio, it's on information technology, it's on YouTube, it's on Snapchat, it's on uh, um, email, it's on Facebook, it's on Instagram. We are inundated, inundated with it. And yet, people are still stumbling. Well, there's four reasons. One. Jesus said, one of them is the birds. The birds. Who are these birds? Who are these birds that steal the goodness of God from a person's life? Who are these birds that cause the people that are living across the street, even from where I'm filming this right now, the birds that are living across the street from the church, and they have no, they can just walk into the blessing of God, but they know nothing about it. They, They don't care about it, but they're a mess, and they can't figure out how to get out of it. Did you hear what I said? Know nothing about it, don't care about it, but they're a mess and they can't figure out how to get out of it. Jesus said to birds, the birds. And and I've tried to thought, what are the birds? Oh, the birds. I think the birds are this, when we have this attitude, well, you know, I don't need help. It'll work out. Can I tell you, things don't always work out. In fact, thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people will go through their life this year millions will go through their life this year hoping that it works out and it won't when the truth is right there in front of them and so when the lord said the birds the birds it'll work out well the birds come and steal the word of god because people think that it's going to work out and they don't have to really you know do anything else it's just you know things are going to get better the second one is he said, sometimes the seed is sown, the good things of the Lord are sown, and, and, and people really, they, they, they want it, they embrace it, they say, oh, I need God, I, I need extra help, I need the things of the Christ, I need the blessing of the Spirit of God. But then he said, then there's rocks, rocks that get in our way, and, and we're walking, and all of a sudden we trip over a rock. 
And what are the rocks? Well, we know that the birds are, it'll work out, but the rocks are the troubles, the troubles of this life. I was just talking to somebody yesterday, hot off the press, yesterday, that they and her husband, they're trying to, uh, this family, excuse me, is trying to get their head together and, and want to do things right financially, and they have X amount budgeted for rent, but because of inflation, they're having trouble. Now, I'm not saying that they're falling away. They're not. But those are the troubles I'm talking about. People that budget X amount, something happens. You think you're going to be have enough to fill your tank up with gas. It's going to be a couple hundred bucks or a hundred bucks. And all of a sudden, something goes on wrong in your house or the air conditioner goes out. Things don't work out. And it's these, these troubles that come. And we get to looking at the trouble and we forget that the Lord is the answer. The third thing that Jesus talked about were weeds. Weeds. And then he explained the weeds are the worries of this life and the desire for toys. We are in a shopping nut society. And I'm not getting on anybody out there. I am telling you, myself, we're in a shopping nut society. We at Crosswinds believe that you should live a life that that you're not getting into debt to buy your toys, etc. But the things of this world tell us, come on, you'll feel better by doing it. And we go out and we buy things we can't afford to impress people we don't like. That soon, within weeks after we get them, we wish we had enough. Or it's not as fun or as great as we thought. Those are weeds. You're doing well. Think, man, I'm going to serve the Lord. You know what? My life's going to get better. You know what? I, I, this is going to be the best year of my life. And all of a sudden, the worries of the life come out. You bought something, you've overspent. I mean, Amazon is showing up at your door one too many times. You know what I'm talking about. My goodness. You, you, you go to the stores and they, they tell us that we're, we're, getting, we're, we're kind of in a recession now. Uh, this is as I speak in this moment. We're kind of in a recession. We've got inflation. We've got processes. We's got problems. Uh, it, it just it compounding. And yet, people are living like nothing is happening. And when you live like nothing is happening, watch, that's when weeds begin to grow up into your life. And pretty soon, the weed that started as something small becomes all-encompassing and engulfs you. And it causes you to have trouble and difficulty and trials. And it trips you up. And it keeps you from living the great life that God has desired. And finally, Jesus said, Some of the seed falls, the fourth thing that he said is some of the seed falls on good soil. Good soil. Good soil is where the seed is planted. It begins to grow a plant and that plant produces a crop and that crop is harvested and it just continues to multiply and and you just can't run out. And, And so the soil, in my own mind, the soil is when a person says, God said it, that's it, that settles it, That's how we're going to live. When you have come to that point, then your life, your heart, your mind, your spirit is good soil. And that word of God, that presence of God will fall on that. And that begins to produce a great life. I look at the news and I look at all these things and I, and I know this is a fact. And I'm I'm telling you friends out there, this is not God's will for your life to live and have the birds steal things from you to live and have the troubles of the rocks and the weeds and the worries of life and the desires for things. That's not God's will for you. God's will for you is full and abundant prosperity. Here's what David, King David, prayed. If you don't know who King David is, you know David and Goliath. That's the guy I'm talking about. And he said this. He said, Lord, don't let me stumble so that I may serve you while I enjoy my life. That's the book of Psalms. Lord, do not let me stumble so that I may serve you while I enjoy my life. That's God's will for that we don't, so that we don't stumble, excuse me, so that we don't stumble so that we may serve the Lord while we enjoy our life. So let's look it in again. Okay. We are stumbling around, not all of us, but many of you. Many of you watching right now are stumbling. Or you know people are stumbling. And they're stumbling because we just 
haven't engra- en- engrafted the greatness of God inside of our life and we haven't allowed him the freedom to work and create our life into a wonderful entity that he wants to. And the seed of the word of God that's even being sown today, what are you going to do with it? Are the birds going to come? Maybe you're watching and you say, well, yeah, I got troubles, but it's going to work out. Ha, huh. that's the birds. Maybe you're watching and you've got troubles and, and, and there's difficulty and trials and maybe there's a court hearing coming up or or you've done something wrong and you've got to make it right and, and just, you're just struggling and stumbling and those are the rocks. Or maybe you're in this production, this, this production society we have that not only produces but wants to buy more than we produce. Maybe you're in this thing where you think, if I can get one more toy, it'll make me feel better. If I can get one more car, it'll make me feel better. If I, if I change houses, it'll make me feel better. If I change jobs, it'll make me feel better. If I li- li- leave this town and go to another town, it'll make me feel better. The answer is get rid of this wife and maybe I'll find another wife or this man I'm with is not the right one, so I need to get the right one. Uh, maybe you're saying I've, I've sick with men. I don't need any men. Maybe sick with women. I, you know, whatever it is, that's the weeds. And if you don't watch out, they'll engulf you and strangle you. But then there's the soil. And I challenge all of you today to ask yourself, have you settled it in your heart that there is nowhere else to go but to God? That's it. That settles it. I'm going to live like it because that is the way God is designed for me. You see, we do have a choice. And the choice is to live like you're continuing to live where it works out or you're struggling with trouble or the desire for toys, whatever. Or you can be patient and the Lord allow the Lord to complete his work in you. Remember what we spoke in the beginning in Galatians when it says this, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever we sow, the seed that we sow will always work out or it will always produce what it is that you've sown. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever we sow, we will also reap. And I believe that this is really going to touch many of you today. And so I want to challenge you in two things. First of all, maybe you're watching and you don't know if you die tonight, if you're going to go to heaven or hell. If that's you, I'm going to give you the opportunity to give your heart to Christ in a second. Or perhaps you're watching and the birds or the rocks or the weeds have stolen from you. Or maybe you have good soil, but you know that you need to go to the next level and just make it better. Just make it better. The Holy Spirit's there to help you. And so go back to those who want to give their hearts to Christ. If that's you, would you do me a favor and just blink at the screen right now? Just blink just like that. I mean, I can't see you, but God knows. God sees and God's ready to move into your heart and create within you that great life he's ordained for you to do. If you blinked, I'm going to ask you to say a prayer with me. If you're by yourself, say it out loud. If you're with somebody, say it in your heart. And here we go. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me for my sins. I believe you for me. I believe you rose again. And with your help, from this day forward, I will live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, click on the links in the description below and begin to walk in faith, knowing that God has a plan for you. Hey, if this sermon has touched you, if you know somebody that's messing with the birds, the rocks, and the weeds, if it has touched you in that way, please pass it on. Please begin to uh, share through social media and support us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Share with your friends, knowing that God has a plan for you and God has a plan for them. And if you gave your heart to Christ, click on the links attached below. And Jesus is ready to, man, take you by the hand and move to the next level. Well, you know what? Last week we had a great outreach and it was our backpack outreach for uh, low income schools in our area. And we passed them around. And, uh, you know, while you're watching here, there's some few slides that are going to come up. And so just enjoy as the slides come up. But I want to tell you this, that we had a great group that sh- showed up. We did about 120 backpacks. We had the uh, police that were here. They brought their SWAT truck. They brought their motorcycles. The kids were just blessed. And then Monday, 
we went into the schools themselves with the permission of the principal and the, the leadership of the schools. We went in there and we passed them out to kids that, that couldn't make it. Their parents didn't get them there. We went and met all the teachers. We met every teacher in kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade in Rita Cannon and, and just told them we loved them and we cared for them. It was a great outreach. And I want to thank you for that. And I want to thank you for being a great giver. If you're part of our giving team at Crosswinds, God bless you. And if you're not, here are the ways to give. You can give online at crosswindsnv.org. Text to give, 84321. Mobile giving app, Secure Give. In-service giving, and you can even mail it to 2100 El Rancho Drive, Sparks, Nevada, 89431. I trust God has blessed you. And listen, this giving is not something that we do lightly. It is something we do on purpose and something you should do on purpose for the glory of God. And as always, let's declare God's truth over our lives. Are you ready to say it with me? Here we go. I am blessed. I have divine favor. I'm not alone. I am a child of God. I am more than a conqueror. I put my trust in the Lord. I walk in the promises of God's holy word because God has a miracle for me. And remember, Crosswinds, we are better together God bless you.